Hello, my brothers and sisters. This is series 268. And we're going to be, the, the topic for today is doom for false teachers. Doom for false teachers. And what God is saying here is um, these people that teach falseness, falsehood, and not about Christ, you are doomed. And there's no way out of it unless you repent. But if you keep on following in your same old practices of sin and desires of sin, you are doomed. Paul talks about the very same thing. So we have to be very, 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 very careful who we hang around. Because if we hang around the wrong crowd, we gonna, some, some are going to take on the wrong crowd behavior. And some won't. But you have to be so grounded and rooted in Jesus Christ, like the apostle, that you wouldn't do that. And a lot of test comes too. A lot of God will test you to show you who you are really made out of. And some of you are going to fail. No doubt. Uh, Peter failed at times. But he said, after you have healed, if after you have been healed, then you turn around and help your brothers and sisters through what your failure was. Because you can teach them not to go down that path. But if, in case if you do fall, get back up and, and, and keep stay focused on Jesus Christ and keep going. Because Jesus really wants everybody, says the Bible. Peter says he wants everybody to be saved. I mean, he paid the high price for us. Very high price. So we have to acknowledge that and live accordingly. Uh, number four, okay, uh, 2 Peter, uh, 2 Peter 2, 4 through 11. And we're going to go through, this is where Peter goes back into the Old Testament. And he talks about Noah. He talks about Solomon and Gomorrah. Um, he talks about Abraham. He talks about Lot. So, Peter is trying to show you how serious the matter is. And there's a fine line that you do not want to cross. So, um, this is what Peter is trying to describe to his readers. The ones that was there and the ones here today. He's telling us the same thing. Um... So let's read number four. Uh, 2 Peter 2, one, uh, 4 says, For God did not spare even the angels who sinned. He threw them into hell in gloomy pits of darkness where they are being held until the day of judgment. This is, this is what God did. He threw those angels in. Remember they gave, uh, after Satan had told them uh, lies about God, and it was one-third of them, they left. When they, Satan got kicked out, all of them went to. God kicked them all out. So we have to watch ourselves that the people that we listen to, Satan turned into a false teacher, a false leader. And we can't fall in that same that same mistake. It's out there, and we can easily do it. So we don't want to do that because we're going to hell. That's why he point blank tells you if the angels went to hell, hell beware, you will too. Uh, let's go to Genesis uh, 6, 1 through 8. That's the cross-reference scripture. And it says, the topic says, a world gone wrong. Isn't that something? A world gone wrong. It went wrong in Noah's day. It went wrong in, in, in Lot's day. And it's going to go wrong in our day. So what he's trying to do, what Peter's trying to tell you, history has a way of repeating itself. 
and history will repeat it itself. Because in, 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 the, in, in this day and time, what's going to happen, this world will be destroyed by fire. Not by water, but by fire. God said he won't destroy it by water no more, but he will destroy it by fire. He's going to burn everything up on earth. Everything man has created, he's going to burn it up. He's going to burn it up to the down to the ground, and it's going to turn right back into the dust. From dust we came, and from dust we will return. Understand that. Uh, number one says, Then the people began to multiply on the earth, and daughters were born to them. Number two says, The Son of God saw that beauty, beautiful, the sons of God saw now, the beautiful women. And took and took any they wanted and their as their wives. Then the Lord said, "My spirit will not put up with human, uh, with human, with humans for much, for much, for such a long time, for they are only moral flesh. In the future, their moral life lifespan." will be no more than 120 years. God, after all that was going on in the earth, that these, now they, what, they, what they were saying is these angels that came down and had sex with the women on earth. So therefore, but there was giants. There were giant uh, uh, beings. So God was disturbed with that. Very disturbed. Because you know, he don't like sin. He can't stand it. And so, um, number four says, in those days and for, the, and for some time afterwards, giant Neptunites lived on the earth. For when, whenever the sons of God, sons of God, God, had intercourse with the women, they gave birth to children who became the heroes of of. Fam uh, famous warriors of the ancient times. They, they made giant uh, children. And they became warriors from the ancient times. Um, number five said, the Lord observed the extent of the human wickedness. This was all wickedness. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Uh, on, on the earth. And he saw that everything they thought or Imagine was consistently and totally evil. Everything they did was evil. It had nothing to do with, with, with God's plan of righteousness. Nothing. Number six says, so the Lord was sorry. He, even, he had even made them and put them on the earth. It broke his it broke God's heart. It broke his heart. King James Burton said he hated to see men so wicked. He hated it. It grieved him at his own heart. That's what the King James Burton says. Number seven says, And the Lord said, I will wipe them. I will wipe these, this human race. I have created from the face of the earth. He said, I'm going to wipe them out. I don't want to see them no more. Yes, he says, and I will destroy every living thing. Even every living thing he will destroy. All the people and all the large animals and all the small animals that that uh, carries along anything that uh, creepeth along the ground and even the birds of the sky. I am sorry. I even made them. Wow. Now, God was really upset that he created something and it did not follow in the image of him. Now, he says, but Noah found favor with the Lord. Noah found favor with the Lord. Noah did. He was the only one, isn't there something, the only one on the earth that's living right, living righteous? And his children and wife. That's all God could find. 
how many do you think God has found in our day and time right now? How many, how many do you think he can look down on earth and say, yeah, yes, they are living like me. That's the image of me. Can, can, can you really say God is saying that to you? That he found favor in you because you are living holy? and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Let's go back up to uh, 2 Peter and 5. 2 Peter 2 and 5. Number 5 says, And God did not spare the ancient world, world except for Noah and the seven and seven others in his family nor warn the world of God's righteousness, judgment, righteous judgment. So God protected Noah when he destroyed the world of ungodly people with a vast flood. These were the ancient, this was the ancient world, the ancient people, the giants in the land. So these are the ones that God destroyed. And left only Noah. Look, uh, and the thing I want to, sh what God wants you to see is, look how serious He is. God ain't playing with us. God is not playing with us. We can play around with God if we want to, but don't wind, don't wind up like these ancient people. Don't wind up like the Pharisees and Sadducees. This is what God is telling us. This is what Peter is writing to us so that we will get a clear understanding how serious God is. And we can go to Genesis. Um, the cross reference scripture is Genesis 6, 9 through 22. Genesis 6, 9 through 22. And the topic is the story, story of Noah. Number 9 says, this is, the, uh, this is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on the earth at that time. The only one. And he walked in, he walked in close fellowship with God. Listen to how he became so blameless. He walked in close fellowship with God. This is where we have a problem because we don't want to give up our children. We don't want to give up our job. We don't want to give up nothing <clears throat> to walk in close fellowship with God so that we can be blameless. See, because when you walk in close fellowship with God, God tell you things. God tell you what you're doing wrong. And most of the time, we don't want to hear what we're doing wrong. Just like children when we're raising them up. Children don't want to hear nothing about what they're doing wrong. They really don't. Because I didn't. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. Children, no different than they, children are doing what they want to do now. And parents are letting them do it. Woe be unto you. You spare the rod and you spoil the child. Woe unto you. Um, number, number 10 says, Noah was the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Joseph. And number 11 says, um, now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. When you're corrupt and you live for the devil, it's going to be filled with violence. Look at what's happening now in the United States about this last president that we had, how he how he incited a, a riot. He incited a hatred, you see? We are becoming corrupt and we're becoming filled with violence. You see, so history will repeat itself. It has to because God said it would. It don't have to be because we can love each other. We can. Christians, let me tell you, you're going to have to stand up and show real love when hatred come at you. You can't fight back. 
Because why? You gave up your life for the gospel's sake. And you got to be in the image of Christ. Christ never fought back. Never. You may lose your life, but you can't fight back. And I know other folk going to say you're crazy, but you're not. This is the only way you can live for God. You have to give up your life for the gospel's sake. For the sake of Christ, just like he did. Number 13 says, So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures, for they have filled the earth with violence. He said, all living creatures, they filled my earth with violence. And that was not the plan. They were supposed to fill the earth with love, humility, humbleness, all the fruits of the Spirit. And then it says, yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. He said, I'm going to wipe every last one of them off the face of the earth. 14 says, build a large, this is, this is God talk, talking to uh, Noah. He says, build a large boat uh, from cypress wood and, weather, and waterproof it with tar inside and out. Then construct decks and, and, and stalls throughout its interior. And 15 says, make the boat 100, 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. So that is one huge uh, boat. If it's 450 feet long, um... That's about two two football fields. That's a long ways. Um, number sixteen says, "Leave and leave an eight inch opening below the the roof all the way around the boat. Put the door on the side and build three decks inside the boat, low, medium, and high." He wanted to open in all of the boats. I mean, all the decks. Number, number nine, 17 says, look, I am about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathed. Everything on earth will die. Now, that might sound like a cruel God. That might sound like a hateful God. Not so. Because Anything that don't want to live like God in love, peace, and happiness is an enemy to God. But he's wiping them out, but he's give, still giving them a home. They got a home to go live in. That's hell. Why would you give up the opportunity to live in peace, love, and joy, and happiness to go to hell and be burned every minute of the hour, every second of a minute. Why would you do that? You have a choice. My brothers and sisters, you have a choice. This is why Peter is telling this story. Because he don't want you to fall in the same footsteps as the ancient ones. Um, number 18 says, but I will confirm my covenant with you. So enter the boat, you and your wife, and your sons and your wives. He said, enter the boat. Number 19 says, bring a pair of every kind of animal, animal, a male and a female, into the boat with you to keep them alive during this flood. See how beautiful God is? He made sure everything, creeping thing, or whatever else, was saved in that boat so that they could replenish the earth. When you do good, you are rewarded. But when you do bad, mm -mm, there's consequences. Hope you just don't go down that road of deception so far to where you can't get back. You don't want that spirit of the devil to root back up in you. Because 
that person that had those seven demons in him. They had one in the first, first, but then that demon wanted to go back into that same house, that same person. So he went and got seven more demons, and they all came and jumped in together, you see? And the reason that one demon could go, couldn't go back because generally that person recognized if you was, if your, that demon was a, 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 a fornicating demon, you recognize that fornicating spirit. If it was a drunken demon, you recognize that, that, that drunken spirit. So you won't go that direction, especially if you have been delivered. Oh, no, 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 I'm not going that way. But what the devil does, he go get some other ways to come at you, some that you're not familiar with. And all it takes is one to jump in you. Then all the rest of them pile up in there too. You see? So this is what we got to be very, very careful about. Number 20 says, pair, pair, of, eat, pair of every kind of bird and every kind of animal and every kind of small animal that, um, that skirmishes along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. They're going to come to you. You ain't got to go get them. They're going to come to you because I'm going to, God going to send them to you. And there's something God can talk to the animals too. And they'll obey. They will obey. Remember the donkey and uh, uh, who was that? Uh, Balaam. Uh, he was a prophet. And he was going down this, this, through this mountain. And the donkey stopped and told him, start talking to him. Told him what to do. And, and he just beat the donkey. And because we don't listen. We don't listen to what, what God is saying. You see? We got to listen. 21 says, and be sure that, be sure to take on, on board enough food for your family and for all the animals. 22 says, so Noah did everything exactly. That's what we got to do. Exactly what God said. Exactly what God commanded him. That's what we got to do. Whatever God says, we got to do it to the T. We can't narrate from it. Um, now let's go back up to six. And All right. Now we're going to cover um, four verses, which is going to be from six through nine. All these verses are going to go together. And um, so let's start at 6. Um, 2 Peter 2, 6 through 9. And number 6 says, Later God commanded the cities of Solomon and Gomorrah. Now we're going back to Solomon and Gomorrah. And turned them into, and turned them into heaps of ashes. He made them exactly of... Uh, an, ex an example of what will happen to ungodly people. Solomon Gomorrah was an example so that we can see, so that we can understand how serious God is. We don't take God serious, but we must take him serious. We get caught up into the way we live, the things that we do. We can't do that. Cannot do that. Because God is not mocked. God is holy. We can't turn to our own intuition, our own ways, and think it's God. Because it's not. Number eight says, yes, Lot was a righteous man who was tormented in his soul. Even though Lot stayed in Solomon and Gomorrah, he was tormented in his soul. Because Lot knew right, Lot knew wrong. He knew there was a God in heaven. And he had he knew he had to obey God. Because he came, he came from the same seed of Abraham. That was Abraham's cousin. So he knew, he knew God. And then it says, in his in his soul, by the wickedness he saw and heard day after day. He lived in wickedness. 
He was in the den of evil. You see? So he understood. Number nine says, so you see, the Lord knows how to rescue godly people. Even though you're in there, you're in it for a while, but just be patient because God going to come. He's going to rescue you from their trials. Even while keeping the wicked under punishment. Solomon Gomorrah was under punishment, but he still knew how to keep life safe. Until the day of final judgment. And we're going to read Genesis 19, 12 through 29. And that's the um, cross-reference scripture for 6 through 9. Genesis 19, 12 through 29. Genesis 19, 12 through 29. Oh, here it is. It says Solomon and Gomorrah destroyed. Uh, number 12 says, Meanwhile, the angels uh, questioned Lot. This is when the angels came to Lot and talked to him and told him what the Lord was going to do. Do you have any other relatives here in the city? They asked, get them out of this place. Your sons and sons, your son-in-laws, your son, your daughter, or anyone else. For number 13 said, for we are about to destroy this city completely. The um, outcry against this place is so great. It has reached the Lord. And he sent us to destroy it. It was so great, it had already reached the Lord in heaven. Isn't that something? Mm. 14 says, so Lot rushed out to tell his daughters, daughters and fiancés, quick, get out of the city. The Lord is about to destroy it. Remember, he told them to get out, but he didn't say nothing about himself. But young men through through. But the young men thought he was only joking. Isn't that something? They thought Lot was joking. <laughs> Excuse me. Number 15 says, At dawn the next morning, the angels, be angels became insistent. Hurry. They said to Lot, Take your wife and your two daughters who are here. Get out of get out, get out right now, or you will be swept away in the destruction of this city. Number sixteen says, "When Lot still in what? When Lot still isn't that this? When Lot still hesitated, the angels seized his hand. They grabbed his hand and the hands of his wife." and two daughters, and rushed them to safety outside the city. For the Lord was merciful. He was merciful for Lot, just like he was merciful for Noah and his children. 18 says, oh no, my Lord, Lot begged. Listen not that Lot now? Here Lot is, he going to ask a request of the angels. Isn't that something? That you know God that well that you can ask, you're in danger right now, and you're going to ask the Lord. Just like Abraham asked um, uh, the angel before they went to Solomon and Gorm, If you find one there, will you save the city? If you find 30 there, will you save the city? If you find 40 there, will you save the city? And they said, will you save one? Will you save the city? And he said, yes, we'll save the city. Isn't that something? So listen to that lot, making the same request. Um, number 18 says, oh no, my Lord, Lot begged. Number 19 says, you have been a, so gracious to me and saved my life. And you have showed such great kindness. 
but I cannot go to the mountains. Disaster would catch up to me there, and I would soon die. 20 says, see, there is a small village nearby. Please let me go there instead. Lot requested. There was a small village nearby. He requested for him to go there and his family. Then it says, don't you see how small it is? Then my life will be saved. Mm, mm, mm. He's requesting for his life be saved in the city. So there's something about that city that Lot knows that we don't know for him to request to go there. 21 says, all right, the angel said, I will grant you I will grant you your request. I will not destroy this little village. Is that something? A little village. Out of just one righteous man words. He said, I'll grant you the request and I will not destroy it. Twenty two no no. Twenty two says, but hurry, escape to it. For I can do nothing until you arrive there. Isn't that something? He said, hurry up and get there. Because I can't do nothing until you get there. Your safety is more important than me destroying this city right now. And all the surrounding cities. There was five other surrounding cities around it. All those cities were destroyed too. This example why that village was known as Zor, uh, which means little place. It was a little small town, little, little small, small, actually town, I think. But that's how small it was. But evidently, somebody in that city, city that Lot knew, my thinking now, I think that, that Lot knew and he wanted them to be saved as well. 23 says, Lot reached that village just as the sun was rising over the over the Hazon. 24 says, then the Lord then the Lord rained down fire and burned sulfur from the sky and Sodom and Gomorrah. God rained down fire from heaven. Guess what? He rained down rain from, from, from heaven too now and covered and flooded the whole earth. Isn't that something? And flooded the whole earth. So he's going to bring fire from heaven too and destroy the earth. Okay, number 25 says, he utterly destroyed them uh, along with the other cities and villages of the plain. Wiping out all the people and every bit of the, the vegetation. 26 says, but Lot's wife looked back as she was following behind them. And she turned into a pillar of salt. Because she didn't believe it was happening. Remember, the Lot's wife was one of them. So she couldn't believe it. Her whole family and everybody are destroyed. 27 says, Abraham got up early that morning and burned out uh, uh, and hurried out to that place where he had stood in the Lord's presence. 28 says, he looked out across the plains towards Solomon and Gomorrah and watched as consumed and watched as consumed of smoke, consumption of smoke rose from the city like smoke from the furnace. 2029 20, says, but God said, listening, listened to Abraham. Re Abraham request again. Abraham request and kept Lot safe. See, Abraham requested that Lot be safe before he left, Abra before the angel left Abraham. He requested that Lot be safe. Removing him from that, that from that disaster 
that engulf the cities on that plane. Everything was white now. Um, let's go back up to 10 and 11. 10 and 11. So now you see how serious God is about this, about this salvation. Living for Christ. Christ is the new covenant. The Mosaic covenant is over. We don't live under the Mosaic law anymore. But we live under the covenant of Jesus Christ. There is a new law. Which is the same law was from the beginning. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. Love the Lord, love your neighbor as yourself, and love your enemies as well. Applying these two first laws hang all the prophecy that was given in the Old Testament. Uh, where was I? 10 and 11. Uh, 2 Peter 2, 10 and 11. It says, he is especially hard on, ooh, listen to this, hard on those who follow their own twisted sexual desire. He's especially hard on those people. Hmm. And I know he's telling the truth because he was hard on me. Because I had a, a sexual addiction, a, an addiction that I just couldn't stop. I mean, you know, I did my wrong in my days, just like people drink wrong, just like people lie wrong, people steal wrong, you know? So I had those addictions, and God delivered me from those addictions. And I just thank God because I don't worry about them anymore. I don't worry about those desires coming to me and taking over me anymore because they can't. Because has God has given me the Holy Spirit to fight these uh, these um, uh, temptations that come to me now. Matter of fact, I don't even look at them as temptation anymore. I really don't because I don't care about those things anymore. The only thing I care about is God living in me. I have a perfect relationship with God, and I don't want to do nothing to break that relationship up. And this is how we got to feel about our husbands and wives, our spouses. We don't want to do nothing to break up that relationship with our spouses. Because when we do, we've broken the, 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 the royal law. To love your brother as yourself, that means your wife, your, your husband. And you don't supposed to do nothing to break that relationship up. Of course, I know we're ignorant, and I know we, 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 we lose sight of God sometimes, and we do things that just don't make sense. But quickly repent. Quickly. And do what's right. Uh, what was I? Number, number 10. Okay, the rest of it says, and who despite, no, and who despise authority? These People are proud and arrogant. If you just spite authority, you can't stand authority, huh, you're arrogant and proud. Drawing even to scoff, drawing, drawing, drawing even to scoff at superiority. Being with being without so much as trembling. You're not even afraid of God and what he would do to you? Mm -mm -mm. What's wrong with us? Are we living for the devil that much? Whew. That's a hard pill to swallow. <laughs> And then it says, do not dare to bring, uh, no, 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 excuse me. Okay, number 11 says, but the angels who are far greater in power and strength do not dare to bring from form 
the, from the Lord a, char a charge of blasphemy against those uh, supernatural beings. He said the angel, angels who are greater in power and strength, they do not dare to bring to the Lord a charge against a charge of blasphemy against those supernatural beings. If the angels don't do it, you think we should? No. We shouldn't bring a charge either. All right, let's go down to um, the cross reference scripture is Jude. One, three through nine. Jude is one tough book. The Jude, the book of Jude is no joke. Um, verse eleven. Oh no, I'm sorry. This, the topic for this is the danger of false teachers. This is Jude one three through nine. Number three says, "Dear friends, I had been eagerly planning to write to you about the salvation we we all share." But now I find that I must write about something else, urging you to defend the faith that God has entrusted one uh, one for all time to his holy people. He says, I find that I must write about something else, he said urging you to defend the faith. You defend the faith that God has entrusted in you once and for all times to his holy people. I entrusted your, this faith to you. Number four says, I say this because some ungodly people have worn their have, have, have worn their way into your churches. There's some people, that, and I know he's talking about, I know exactly what he's talking about. We had people that come to our churches, and I explained it in the last series. I had people that come to our churches, false prophets, false teachers, trying to make money off of people in the church, telling them lies and, and, and stories, but it sounds like the truth. You have to be very careful. You have to be grounded and rooted in the word so that you can uh, uh, rightfully divide the word of truth. And you can discern these evil spirits. Um, saying that God, marvelous grace, always is to live immoral lives. Now you know that's a lie. To condemn, to, to condemnation of such people was recorded long ago, for they have denied our only master, the Lord Jesus Christ. Those people have denied the master. They're doomed. Doomed for destruction. They're going straight to hell. Anybody that denies Jesus Christ. Number five says, so I want to remind you, through, though you already know these things, you already know these things, that Jesus, that Jesus first re, re, received the nations of Israel from Egypt. No, rescued the nation of Israel from Egypt. But, but, but later, he destroyed those who did not remain faithful. There were children of Israel after he brought them out of Egypt. They did. Remember now, Israel was Israel, God's chosen people. Everybody in Israel was chosen. That was God's children, God's people. But some of them did not remain faithful. Understand this now. You are the children, but you don't remain faithful. But later, he destroyed those who did not remain faithful. He destroyed them. He got rid of them. He sent them to hell. 
Number six says, and I remind you of the angels who did not stay within the limits of authority God gave them, but left the place where they belong. God has kept them secure, changed in prison of the darkness, waiting for the day, the great day of judgment. God got them changed up in prison, in hell. That's what hell. There's a place where in hell that, that, that God keeps the, the people that didn't do right. And there's a place where paradise, where the people that did do right, he's got a place there waiting for them too. So in the last day, he's going to judge them all. Um, number seven says, and don't forget Sodom and Gomorrah. See how Jew just tell Jew tell talk about everybody. Don't get Sol, Sol, Solomon and Gomorrah and their and their neighboring towns, which were filled with immortality and every kind of sexual per, perversion. Those cities were destroyed by fire and served as a warning of the eternal fire of God's judgment. It was a warning. It was a warning to us to live holy. In the same, number eight says, in the same way, the people who claim authority from their doom, from their dreams, live immoral lives, um, defy authority, and scoff at superior uh, supernatural beings. They scoff at supernatural beings. Jesus was supernatural. They scoffed at him. They didn't believe him. Angels, Michael, and other angels, they scoffed at him because they don't believe. They are angels, you see. Number nine says, but, but even Michael, one of the mightiest of the angels, did not dare accuse the devil of blasphemy. Isn't that something? He didn't even accuse the devil of blasphemy. That's how fine this line is. Why? Because God created Satan. And if he had a blaspheme against Satan, he would be blasphemed against God because that's God's creation. But simply said, it says, he sim but simply said, the Lord rebuked you. That's what Jesus told Peter when he said something wrong. He rebuked Peter. This took place when Michael was arguing with the devil about Moses' body. This is when this all happened. Michael didn't accuse nothing. Nothing. Michael didn't accuse him of nothing. He said, "He said uh, the Lord rebuke you." And that was enough. He did not try to show his authority and his power, but he came to show God's authority and God's power. This is how we should be. We should be demonstrating God's power in us. God's ability in us to do God's will and not our own. Because once we step out on our own, we step in flesh. This is a very good example of Michael being the archangel, the baddest angel in heaven. He didn't even step out of his position to blaspheme against Satan. He didn't do it. Even Jesus, when Jesus was in the mountain and Satan was going to offer him all this all over the world, what did Jesus say? It is not good to tempt the Lord thou God. That's how he put Satan in his place. You see? This is the same way that Michael did. He put Satan in his place. And said, the Lord rebuke you. Jesus is our Lord. Um, That's the end of that. So now we're going to read the... Um, <clears throat> now we're going to read the conclusion. Uh... Mm. 
All right, and the conclusion is this. This is talking talk about the flood at first. And then it says, God punished the wicked people too. He flooded the ancient world, Genesis uh, chapter 6 and chapter 8. God rescued Noah and his wife, while three sons and three wives, but every, everyone else died. God had warned Noah that the world seen a, the world sent a flood. Noah built an ark, a big boat, because he believed God's warning. The wicked people had probably laughed at Noah. And I know you you picking a big boat out of nowhere. Ain't no water around. Why are you building a big boat? You can understand. That's what people do. That's they talk about you. They scoff at you. You see? So... Uh, it says the wicked people had probably laughed at Noah while he built such a big boat. But Noah, believing that God would judge the world, Noah was a good man. He lived in a in in in, in the right way. Uh, you'll find that in Genesis 6 and 9. And then it says the people at that time could see the good way that he lived. People know how you live. They're looking at you every day. They know what you say. They know what you do. And they want to see if you're going to live up to it. Joseph, Joseph, was, Joseph uh, was a man who wrote about Jewish history. He called Noah a prophet. Peter referred to Noah as, a, as the flood in his first letter. Uh, 1 Peter 3 and 20. The cities around uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. God, com God completely destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Therefore, uh, they showed what will happen to the wicked people. You can read about false uh, about these cities in Genesis um, 18, 16, and then in ninth verse. I mean, chapter 19 and 29. Um. Peter said to Lot, Peter said that Lot was a good man. Lot was a perfect. No, Lot was not perfect. He chose to live in a wicked city. Lot chose to live there. And God still saved him. He chose to do that. God still saved him. The people in Solomon and Gomorrah lived without any uh, principles. They did not want, they did not did what they wanted. They sacrificed their wicked sexual desires. They satisfied their wicked selfish desires. Uh, sexual desires. However, Lot did not believe, behave like the wicked people. Christians often live around wicked people. Sometimes the Christians do not notice the evil deeds anymore. They just accept them. Isn't that something? We accept their wrongdoings. They do not feel sad about them. Lot hated it. So we're going to live around uh, 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 people that's really wicked and we don't hate the, the, the sin. But Lot said, but Lot saw and heard the evil deeds. He was very unhappy about them. We must be unhappy too because it's not, it's not God. It's not even pleasing to God. Jesus didn't like it. But he knew he had to save everybody through sacrifice. That is why God rescued him. God knows how to, how to rescue good people. The Bible about Noah and Lot shows, shows this. God does not pre, uh, prevent difficulties in the Christian life. He don't stop difficulties from coming in your, in your Christian life. But he makes Christians strong so, they, so that they can overcome the difficulties. 
1 Corinthians 10 and 13. God will punish all the evil people. They, listen, he said, I don't care, Christians or not. If you're going to follow the ways of darkness, he will punish you. Ask me, I know, I was punished uh, many times for doing wrong. And that was a good whooping that I will never forget. It's just like my mama used to whoop me. I never forget them whooping me. Because when she whooped me, I remembered what I did and I, what, what I shouldn't do anymore. And the same way is with God. The, uh, they will not escape from God when he finally judged them. God will ex especially judge the false teachers. They uh, satisfy all the wicked desires of their bodies. This is what we used to do too. And some of us still do. But be very careful because he's going to destroy you. This refers to wrong acts of sex. They would not obey any one's authority. They uh, certainly did not care about God's authority. They did, they did only what they wanted to do. Angels are, are, are greater than people. Than people are. Psalms 8 and 5. Angels have more power and they are stronger than the false teachers. But the angels would not judge. The, isn't that something? Even the angels wouldn't even judge the false teachers. Even Michael wouldn't even judge Satan. He just said, Satan rebuke you. Angels understand. What was that? Okay, also, the angels would not excuse other angels who did not obey God. Angels understand more about God's authority than the false teacher did. He knew they was ignorant. You understand? We know, even we know some of our fellow believers are ignorant. So there's no need to judge them. They just have to, we have to teach them better. God alone has the right to judge. Jude verses uh, 8 through 11. And that concludes this, this lesson. And God is trying to tell you, wake up and Notice how serious he is about living right. There is no, there is no double line, triple line. There is only one line. And you can be either on the right or you can be the left. The last day, Jesus, you're going to be on the left side or you're going to be on the right side. He's saying, he is saying to you right now, you choose. You have, you still have a choice. Jesus never took that choice from you. You have a choice to live right or live ungodly. But he's saying to you right now, these are the last days. We're coming. Look at everything that's happening in the world and in the United States right now. It's coming down. Satan is trying to take back what Jesus took from him. He's trying to take it back. I mean, he's going all outboard right now. Notice what notice the signs of the times. It's happening. It's happening. We may or may not be a country that have a dictatorship mentality. We don't know, but I tell you one thing you you, you better know. You better know Jesus. Because when these crazy folks start to taking stuff away from you, we are gonna find out. Do you really know Jesus? A lot of us gonna be just like these homeless people. Dictatorship only know one thing: you either rich or you're poor. That's all they know. They don't care about nobody else. 
They just care about the rich. There's no middle class. That's going to be wiped away. That's what the Bible says. So the only thing God is trying to tell you is get ready. It's coming. Get ready. Playing church is time out for playing church. It's time to know God on a serious note. Dig deep to know this word. Be glad that God has called me to put this out. And many other people are talking about the same thing I'm talking about. He said he was going to make sure that no man, that no man would not know him. He's going to make sure somebody get the word out. And you're going to know the truth. And the truth is going to set you free. I love you, my brothers and sisters, and so does God. God bless you, God keep you, and keep you strong in his will. Amen.